Good afternoon to you all at Marrakesh from Sydney. And I'm sorry I couldn't attend um, the important Global Landscapes Forum held by C4. But I'd like to really talk about um, what you've achieved today, but also really reflect on the journey that, that, that the Global Landscapes Forums have been on since I spoke at Jakarta. And at Jakarta, we talked about risk, and we talked about language, we talked about things that today seem like a million years ago. From Jakarta, we went to Lima. Um, we had the enormous success at Paris, um, and now you're at Marrakesh. And now there's a commitment um, to take the Global Landscape Forum in a major way into Europe and around the world. And for that, you know, C4 and the Global Landscape Forum are to be congratulated. But I just wanted to reflect a little bit on the journey and then talk a little bit about, about the financing of the landscape. I suppose um, one of my earliest comments which has been picked up has been the fact that where capital goes in the next 15 years will determine what sort of planet we have. And I'm glad that's been plagiarised by just about everybody because it is the case. And I think if we reflect on what happened and what was said um, in Jakarta compared to today, Green was risk. Green was risk to the financial community. And it was unusual for a banker to actually attend such a, a gathering. Um, today, green finance is nearly mainstream. Today, green finance is, is according to the G20, um, and I was at the IMF World Bank meetings in, in, in Washington three or four weeks ago, it's a $10 trillion asset class. So we have seen a, an amazing movement in two to three years in terms of what private capital thinks of the green economy. Now, the fact is that, that, that it's easy for me to talk about the growth in green bonds, um, where China thinks it's going to go, um, but the issue is that we're going to have a huge amount of money coming in to the green economy at the macro level. We've now got banks that put climate along with health and safety on top of their board. We've got a number of major global financial institutions focused on financing the energy trans transfer, um, the environmental transfer, uh, the green economy, and we've got investors deeply, deeply interested in building up their assets in this particular class. Um, I would say most of the major global institutions are now well defined and down this path with really sophisticated people in sustainability issuing their own green bonds. All that is happening and in a way that we would never have anticipated back in Jakarta. But the problem we've got is how do we move that into the micro, which is what you're talking about today. But I wanted to say just one other thing before we talk about that very briefly. And that is that where we stand today at the macro level on green finance is only at the cusp. What we are going to see from a regulatory process globally, from the G20 finance, Green Finance Study Group, um, with things like looking at capital weightings with the Stability Board, these things are all in train. So the $10 trillion asset class could be $20, $30 trillion. Um, so the money will be there, but the issue for all of those who are gathered in Marrakesh is how to actually bring that down to the local level. And that is the key question that you're going to address. So I, I, I leave you with a note of optimism in terms of massive change with respect to green finance, attention by all the leading investors into the asset class, um, um, real effort by the financial institutions to come to grips with questions of risk, um, real attention by the G20, real attention by all the financial institutions, boards, uh, to, 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 to their participation in this, in this great transition that we have to 
all go along. Um, but we've then got this dichotomy between money at the macro level and how to get it down to the micro level. And on that point, I'd just like to say that since I am Australian and, and, and uh, my friend uh, Minister Frydenberg is there uh, with you all, that Australia is thinking about that in terms of what it does with things like the Great Barrier Reef, um, where the Australian government is committed and I happen to be part of an innovative uh, financial uh, group that are looking at how we actually deal at the micro level with helping the farmers and the landholders um, uh, participate better in terms of restoration uh, and, and, and farming practices that help the reef. At the same time, the Australian government is helping savannah burning in the Kimberleys. Um, the, the Australian government's helping with respect to rainforest restoration up in, up in Sarawak and, 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 and Sumatra. So, these things are happening in Australia, so we're looking at the issues in Australia of how do we actually deal at the micro level. It's not something that's being avoided, and I'm very glad to participate in some of that. Whilst it's a much hackneyed phrase, we are indeed the first generation to be affected by climate change, but we are absolutely the last that can do something about it.